Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We pray on my heart to preach your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me, is my life, my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. The service today is a most interesting juxtaposition. We begin with reading about the magnificent triumphal entry of Jesus on the back of a donkey, and everyone is happy, praising him and singing Hosanna with palm branches. Yet our gospel lesson is all about the trial and crucifixion of Christ, and it can only make you stop in your tracks and consider the pain and agony that he suffered as he was hung upon the cross to die. I would venture to say that it is impossible for a Christian to hear or read the crucifixion account and not be somewhat awestruck and somber. But even though the crucifixion gets our attention, we much prefer to call this Sunday Palm Sunday as opposed to Passion Sunday. We prefer to sing Hosanna and wave palms rather than shout, His blood be on us and on our children. We love to relate to those who welcome Christ in Jerusalem, and we try to distance ourselves from those terrible Jews who were shouting, Crucify Him! Crucify Him! We try to demonize the crowd at Jesus' trial rather than seeing how we relate to them. We aren't any better than they are. We are just as guilty. No matter how much we try to wash our hands as Pilate did, the blood of Jesus is still upon us. Today it would be fitting for all of us to proclaim with the crowd, His blood be on us and on our children. We try to blame others like Judas, saying that if he wouldn't have betrayed Jesus, then this terrible event wouldn't have had to have happened. Or we put the blame on the priest. If they wouldn't have roused up the crowd and been so evil, then Jesus wouldn't have been crucified. Or we blame the crowd. If they wouldn't have been so easily controlled and manipulated by the priest, then Jesus could have been spared. Yet the reality is that this had to happen. Jesus had to die. It was destined from the first promise God made to Adam and Eve before being exiled out of the garden. Try as we might, we cannot pinpoint the blame for the death of Christ to one particular person or group. It's like the saying goes that when you point your finger at someone, you have four fingers pointing right back at you. Not only is the death of Christ the fault of Judas, Pilate, the priest, and the crowd, but it is also the fault of Adam and Eve, of Moses and Abraham, and you and me. We are all responsible for the death of Christ. All of mankind should be saying, His blood be on us and on our children. His innocent blood is on our hands and on our heads. We have killed him on account of our sins. He was killed not for his own misdeeds, but rather he took the fall for us. He endured the pain, torture, and crucifixion that we deserve on account of our sin. When we hear about the pain and agony that he endured, we realize that we are the ones that caused all of this. Jesus was beaten, mocked, crucified, and his blood was shed on us and on account of our children. We are guilty no matter how much we try to deny it, no matter how much we try to blame others. 
It is your sins and my sins that caused Christ to be crucified. His blood is on you and your children. His blood is on me and my children. As much as this seems like a big downer, as much as this seems like a terrible, morbid thing to say, His blood be on us and on our children, it's not. It's a beautiful thing that Christ was put to death on our behalf. Because if it weren't for his sacrificial death, we would all be doomed to hell. If his blood were not placed upon us and our children, we would still be in our sins. As much as it is his blood that condemns us and shows our guilt, as the crowd thought when they shouted the phrase, more importantly, it is his blood that sets us free. It is the blood of Christ placed upon us and upon our children that gives us forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. The blood that he shed in his death is precisely the same blood that gives us life. We shouldn't be bashful about shouting gladly, his blood be on us and on our children. It is on account of his life-giving blood that we are here today and every Sunday. It is his life-giving blood that we receive in the Lord's Supper, and it is his life-giving blood that is poured upon us in our baptism. It is his blood that washes us and makes us clean. It is his blood that covers all of our sins and transgressions. In our baptism, we are washed in the blood of Christ, our Passover lamb. It is the blood of Christ that cleanses us from all our sins. When the triune name was spoken and the water was poured over our heads, it was as if the blood was placed upon us and made us clean. Just as John saw the saints in heaven who had washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In our baptism we are joined with those saints and we are cleansed by the blood of Christ. As baptized children, we gladly say, His blood be on us and on our children. We also receive the blood of Christ in the Lord's Supper. As Christ Himself instituted the sacrament of the altar, He proclaimed the cup, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. In the Lord's Supper, we partake the very blood that Christ shed, on the cross. In his body and blood we receive the forgiveness of sins that he won for us. The blood of Christ is not something to shy away from, but rather something to be embraced. After all, we worship a crucified Christ who died for us and shed his blood for us. As Luther's explanation of the second article states, I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and his innocent suffering and death that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. This is how Christ purchased us out of the bonds of slavery to sin, with his holy, precious blood and his innocent suffering and death. This is why we should have crucifixes in our homes and all around, to remind us that Christ won us in his suffering and death. When we look at a crucifix, we are reminded that his blood is upon us and upon our children, in a good way. We are reminded that by his wounds we are healed. As we continue with this and future Palm Sundays, it is good to remember Christ's triumphal entry and how he was praised, but it is even more important that we remember that his blood was shed for us. As we reflect upon the passion of our Lord this week, we do not weep over his death, 
we weep over our sin. However, we are also reminded that we are not left in our sin. In His death, we are freed from sin, and we are united with Him as we are covered in His blood. We are the cause of His death, and yet at the same time, we are also the benefactors. As the crowd was chanting Hosanna, which means save us, their request was answered later in the week when they chanted His blood be on us and on our children. It is His blood which grants us the salvation which we so desperately need. So we take comfort and joy in saying, along with the crowd here on this blessed Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday, His blood be on us and on our children. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 